if you've been up to date with the news on artificial intelligence, then you definitely know what an artificial neural network is. But if for some reason you've never heard of those words before, this presentation will clear things up for you and give you a small introduction on what is an artificial neural network. A long time ago, humans have always looked up at the sky in hopes of someday being able to fly just like birds, which is how the airplane was inspired. Ages later, humans dove into the sea but couldn't reach certain depths, which is when they invented the submarine, being inspired by their counterparts from nature, the whale. Just like that, humans now want a machine that can be intelligent to help solve intricate problems, which is why you need a brain, specifically the brain's neural network, which is where the inspiration of the topic of this presentation, the artificial neural network, came from. Artificial neural networks are considered the core of deep learning. They are very powerful, versatile, and scalable, which is what you might want as traits for something to be able to finish complex machine learning tasks, such as classifying billions of images on Google Images, or powering speech recognition services such as Alexa and Siri. It has advanced to the point of being used in tools to predict seizures in epilepsy patients, which is being researched nowadays to try and provide a better quality of life for these patients. The neuron is composed of a cell body that contains the nucleus, along with the other complex components that make up the cell. Numerous branching extensions called the dendrites and a very long extension called the axon. The axon's length can be a few times longer than the cell body or a few thousand times longer depending on numerous factors. Near its extremity, the axon splits off into many branches called telodendrions, and at the tip of these branches are microscopic structures called synapses, which are connected to the dendrites or cell bodies of other neurons. Biological neurons produce short electrical impulses, which are interpreted as signals, which travel along the axons and make the synapses release chemical signals called neurotransmitters. When a neuron receives a sufficient amount of these neurotransmitters within a few milliseconds, it fires its own electrical impulse. Artificial neurons act in a similar way. The first network on the left is the identity function. If neuron A is activated, then neuron C gets activated as well, since it receives two input signals from neuron A. But if neuron A is off, then neuron C is also off. The second network performs a logical AND. Neuron C is activated only when both neurons A and B are activated, where in the third network, either input can be active to produce a logical OR. Finally, if we suppose that an input connection can inhibit the neuron's activity, which is the case with biological neurons, then the fourth network computes a slightly more complex logical proposition. Neuron C is activated only if neuron A is active and neuron B is off. If neuron A is active all the time, then you get a logical knot. Neuron C is active when neuron B is off and vice versa. Now. The perceptron is one of the simplest artificial neural networks architectures, which was invented by Frank Rosenblatt in 1957. It slightly differs from the artificial neuron where it uses threshold logic unit, or linear threshold unit. As you can see, the inputs and outputs are numbers. Each input is associated with a weight, the sum of which is computed by the threshold logic unit, and then has a step function applied to it, and outputs the result. The most common step function used in perceptrons is the heavy side step function. A multilayer perceptron, or an MLP, is composed of one input layer called a pass through, one or more layers of TLUs called hidden layers, 
and one final layer of TLUs called the output layer. The layers close to the input are usually called the lower layers and the ones close to the outputs are usually called the upper layers. This is an example of the feed-forward architecture where the signal only flows in one direction.